Afternoon, gentlemen. So, once again, I find myself having um, turned up with absolutely no idea what I was going to talk about, spending the first two days listening to people, and the third day completely failing to attend any talks again because I was writing slides. But it's been great fun, and hopefully you're going to find this at least marginally entertaining. So, traditionally I, I, I seem to start off trying to do a year in review, and I've, I've, I've kind of had a bit of trouble working out what I, wanted to, what I want to say about the previous year. Um, the reason for this is, I, I sort of look at it, there's not been any one thing that has really stood out as this really needs to be talked about. Um, except, you know, 516 came out, third major Pearl version release year on year. Uh, Pearl Brew and CPAM Minus, we pretty much now take for granted that people know about these tools and can use them. Okay, newbies, generally you have to mention it, but you mention it once and they go, oh, this is really cool, and now they're using it. Uh, we've got three very solid web frameworks, all of which appeal to a different subset of developers to a different architectural taste, all of which are working on big and cool things. Uh, there have been all sorts of interesting projects released, but generally projects that don't immediately look exciting as such, but provide um, extra plumbing, things that, things that basically take a bunch of stuff that would normally be a lot of annoying code and reduce it to being a small amount of fairly obvious code, which, I mean, it, it's quite difficult to, to find a way to go, you know, uh, whoa, you, you really have to see this, look at it. It's the sort of code that, that we're best at, the sort of code where you finish something and it's, the, the thing isn't sort of, wow, the thing is, hey, that was actually quite easy. Let's go for a bear. Uh, <laughs> And I'm sort of looking at it and going, going but you know, is this, is this exciting? Isn't it exciting? How do you say, well, the thing is, we're looking at useful stuff be, being shipped. We're looking at continued progress on lots of fronts. We're looking at major releases. And we're saying that we're not surprised by it. Not being surprised by it, that's exciting. Really, uh, you have to look at it that. Regu regular major releases of Pearl 5 aren't, aren't something we all go, oh my god, this is cool, this is amazing, we actually shipped a major release. It's, yeah, yeah, there was another major release. Cool, great. Uh, can, can you imagine when, you know, um, when 5.10.1 came out as finding another major release year on year being unsurprising? I mean, how cool is that? Um, people running recent versions of Pearl is actually something we're not surprised by now. I mean, I know that there's still a lot of environments where you're stuck on 5.8 or you're stuck on 5.10. But I mean, you know, even, even Ubuntu, ancient African word for can't work out how to configure Debian, is managing to ship something from the past two or three years. Wow, I mean, th th this, this is way cool. And it, it's the sort of way cool that you, you barely even notice because it's just there, it's just happening. It's happening everywhere. I, the, 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 world, the world has improved so much. I would, we're, we're living in the future and we've not noticed it because it's here. That's, that's just, that's awesome. Um, also, some, something that in the past sort of year or two, I'm just used to hearing now, it's just normal. It's like, ah, right, well, we, we've got all of this stuff. Uh, let's throw a dev release out. Let's throw a dev release out because that means we'll get the CPAN testers results. We, we, have, we have this amazing infrastructure of testing machines all over the world, running all sorts of things. I mean, you know, there's, there's even smoke results sometimes for things like HPUX and VMS. Um, and, and we go, hey, you know, this is just normal, right? You, you can just expect to be able to get test results on dozens of operating systems, half a dozen versions of Perl per operating system, within 48 hours for free, just by putting a tarball onto CPAN. And th the fact that this is normal to us now, that, that's an exciting thing. 
Um, I mean, really? How, how cool is that? How cool is it that we're, see, that we're seeing all this stuff as normal now? Uh, I, I think, you know, what, what I'm trying to say is, none of this stuff seems that big because we have, as a group, leveled up. And that's, that's just way cool. Um, I mean, even... You look at Hacker News. Um, you look at Programming.Reddit. And, okay, people go, oh, how many Perl articles are on there? Well, okay, there's not that many, but... These sites are largely about things of general interest to general programmers. That's fine. So, you know, any particular language doesn't appear on there that often because generally something appears there because it's something of general interest to a wide set of programmers. So th there's all sorts of stuff, stuff on there that's fascinating to me. None of it's the Perl articles. By the time a Perl article makes it as far as there, I've read about, I've read about the subject matter twice on Iron Man, three times on blogs.perl.org, had an hour's conversation on IRC with the person who wrote whatever the code was. So I, I don't really think that's, that's necessarily a bad thing. Periodically, we do something that's interesting to programmers in a dozen different languages, and that shows up on there. Periodically, somebody else does that. That's all fine. Um, the thing that I think is really kind of nice is that now the comments on Perl articles aren't full of people trolling. You used to get, okay, you, what you used to get was you get an avalanche of troll, half of them would get downvoted, Chromatic and I would shout at the other half, eventually it would sort of calm down and go away. But at, at this point, there have been so many people, even the, the, the nice thing is now it's recognised as just being trolling. So even, you even get situations where a significant number of non pearl programmers will wade in to say, this is just stupid trolling, can we get back to the talking about programming, please? And, oh, but I've been waiting a few years for that. So, okay, that's another cool thing, you know. Um, something else that's interesting, you know, the, over the past few years, there's been arguing back and forth about how conferences should do auctions and... Um, you know, we're finding it a little annoying and um, sadly Greg McCarroll required as auctioneer about the only person I can, I can think of, you know, who could, who could probably have sold this bottle of water and made it exciting. But looking at this year, the answer is, what auctions? The conferences by, by and large haven't really been doing them. I mean, there have been various bits and pieces of silent auctions and raffles, but the auction is a big thing that raises a substantial amount of funds for the conference. It's something that's fading away. And the reason for that is that more and more companies are stepping up to sponsor us. Um, more and more companies that, whose livelihood is, involved, is, is linked to the Pearl community have gone, you know what, this is actually important enough to us that we should put our money where our mouth is. We should send developers. We should, we should sponsor things, we should try and do stuff. I mean, yeah, the, the, there's company like, the companies like Booking.com that have a disproportionate number of developers and provide a disproportionate amount of money. And I'm really grateful to them. But I'm also fascinated by all of the sort of smaller companies that are sponsoring things again and again and again because they've realised it matters, because they want to be involved, because... Um, the idea of, you know, oh, it's really hard to recruit Perl programmers. It's really hard to recruit Perl programmers because the Perl programmers want to go places that understand the community. And the companies are now starting to realise that they can actually write off sponsorship and put in code on CPAN effectively as a human resources expense. And the fact that management are starting to think that they should cooperate with us as a way to get us to want to work for them. I, I, I think that that's a huge thing um, and something that we, we want to see even more of. But the fact that it's happening to the extent it is, is another quiet victory that's going almost unannounced. Um, the other thing is, okay, I, 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 as usual, I have heard of, I have, I've, heard some, I've heard muttering about the Pearl Foundation. Well, you know what? It's the only organisation of that size doing as much stuff as it is, so people are always going to be complaining about it because no matter how much good it does, there's always all the things they've imagined that it could be doing and isn't. That's, that's just one of those things. But I've noticed that this year it's different. 
This year, the, the style of the complaining is significantly different, and this is important. Because what people are complaining about this year is that TPF isn't making enough noise about the things that they are doing. <laughs> and you know what? Yeah, I, 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 would, I would love to see four times as many blog posts coming out of TPF. And more importantly, for four times as many people to find the blog posts that they're already putting up. That people, you know, half, half of what I do is somebody goes, oh, why didn't they announce this? I'm like, they did. Here's a link. I didn't find it. Right, where did you look? I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, if, if, if you ever remember, please do tell me. But I, seriously, th this comes into the category of nice problem to have, right? Um, I mean, you know, we now, as a community, we have higher expectations of what's going on. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely amazed that, you know, immediately after this conference, um, a bunch of our best and brightest are going to be assembling in Oslo to talk about all sorts of interesting bits of collaboration and work on P5MOP, which will hopefully, uh, in the long run, result in one beautiful standard performant object system already in Perl 5 core. And what, what I was expecting to hear uh, in, in the run-up to this was lots of people going, whoa, this is really exciting, this is going to be awesome, it's going to be amazing, it's going to be the best thing ever. And a, a load of other people going, ooh, are we really sure that we want to do this in core? Putting things in core isn't always okay. Maybe we should think about it for another 10 years or so, you know. Uh. <laughs> but what I've heard instead is pretty much, yeah, yeah, it's about time we did that. Those guys can do it. It's cool. <laughs> nice problem to have. Ah. <laughs> uh. And this, this, this is what I want to say. What, what, what we're seeing now is slow building of momentum, making things better, improving stuff. The number of CPAN uploads is still going up. Number of test reports on um, CPAN testers is still going. I mean, we had the uh, grep.cpan.me talk, where he talks about there being over 100,000 modules out there. I, I, whoa, how much code is that that we're never going to have to write ourselves? Um, IRC.pearl.org, I remember um, a, a couple of years back somebody saying to me, oh, well, you know, I, I reckon IRC.pearl.org, it's at 1,000 users now, it's been at 1,000 users for a while, it's probably always going to be about that size. It's 1,250 last time I checked. Uh, so it, 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 it's going. Things are keeping growing. You look at Freenode hash Pearl. I had a conversation on there a few months back. Um, where so somebody went, somebody sort of went, oh, the Python channel has more users than the Perl channel in there. Uh, well, well, okay, maybe it does. Bully for them. Great, whatever. I went back through, went back through my history and went, yeah, but the Freenode Perl channel in the previous three or four years had grown its user base by 35%. I'm a lot more interested in the idea that we're growing that fast than whether somebody else happens to have more people on a channel. The growth is the interesting part. You know, um, one, of the, one of the things that pe people keep looking at is, the, is um, oh, well, we, we need to beat X. No, no, we don't. What we need is a better Pearl future. What we need is to keep enjoying ourselves. What, what, what you have to look at is people talk about winning. Victory requires there to be a loser. So far as I'm concerned, in the, in the sort of meta community that's over the top of the whole open source community, it's not win or lose, it's about success. It's about defining our own ideas of success and a growing community doing cool things and regarding things that we would have considered impossible five years ago as passe and expected. That's, that, that's success by any margin. And if other languages are, all, are also succeeding, well, more power to them. That's great. I'd much rather see a bigger Perl community and a bigger Python community and a bigger Ruby community. Well, I mean, you know, what, what's, what's the alternative? One language wins and everything is, I don't know. Every, what, there, was, there was probably a time when people thought the future is entirely going to be COBOL. Then it was, and then it was the future is entirely going to be Java. 
how about the future's going to be lots of things and we're all cool? Uh, I, th th this works for me. So, this got brought up again. I'm not even going to spell it out anymore. It's rubbish. Really, I am bored of this. We have been going back and forth about this stupid meme for years. I am hoping that the barrage of coffee cups thrown a few days ago may have finally killed this piece of idiocy. But here's the thing, right? Anytime you hear this from somebody outside of Pearl, what that means is they haven't caught up yet. That's OK. Some of us haven't caught up yet. This is why I keep having to talk to people when they go, oh, no, somebody said, somebody said the bad phrase. How many other things? How many other things have been declared, at the very least, to be pining for the fjords over the years? <laughs> do, do, do we see any of them having a problem? Well, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not. I mean, seriously, you, you go, oh my god, Pearl, Pearl, Pearl has been declared moribund. Apple was declared moribund. It took about four years after Steve Jobs came back before people stopped saying that. And even now, Every year, there's some pundit who puts out some huge article about how Apple is about to fail and completely end up destroyed. Doesn't seem to be happening, does it? Yeah, but... <laughs> and so can you be if you come in range of this. <laughs> but no, I've, point taken, but... Really, you know, you, 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 you get this sort of rubbish, and it, it, it's also because people like to have an enemy. Um, people like to have somebody who is the whipping boy, who's the, per the people to insult. And, you know, the, the, one of our problems was, was from the dot-com boom, um, when, quite frankly, a lot of the code written in Perl was very much insult-worthy, but I will come back to that. Um, the correct response to somebody saying that is to laugh and move on, really. Yeah, I, we hear about it less every year. At this point, it, just actually responding to it as a serious question uh, is actually giving it credence that it doesn't deserve. So keep laughing, keep moving on, and then gently and quietly and in a friendly fashion explain to them that they've missed out on about five or six years of history at least and show them some cool code. Show them something written with Dancer. Show them something written with Modulicious. Show them something written with Moose. Show, show them all of this cool stuff that we've put together over the past few years. And by the end of that conversation, you're going to have that person going, hey, I know something all of the people around me don't know. I can now show off and be smug by proving how much I know about how much cooler Pearl's got. And now you've got another evangelist. You know, don't, don't, make, don't make it a point of argument, make it a point of, pli of polite correction and just go, look at all this amazing cool stuff <coughs> that we now consider normal. Why doesn't your language consider having a process called CPAN test as normal, like CPAN test as normal? How could we help you to get there? I mean, you know, more, more and more reliable open source software benefits everybody anyway. No problem with helping people. So... <coughs> Yeah, I mean, people worry about not being the in language. Um, I think, I, the, the, I may be misquoting this slightly, but I think the way Larry put it was um, that there's this big thing of either you're the world killer or you're nothing. Is that about the right words? Cool. Right. Um, and, well, I don't care. I really don't. Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't even understand why we want to care. Um, be, be, being the in language means attracting all of the people who are more interested in programming in the in language than they are in actually learning the technology and getting stuff done. It's the people who are chasing the popular rather than chasing the platform where they're going to be most productive. Um, you know, the, 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 the going back, the dot-com boom. What did we get out of the dot-com boom? We got Matt's script archive. <laughs> I don't think I want that again. <laughs> I, I, I spent many unhappy hours building a custom hacked version of formail.pl at an ISP in 2002 that was sufficiently difficult for customers to turn into an open relay that we didn't keep ending up with mail queues full of crap. 
I, I, I don't want to be there again. And you didn't, did th that sort of fast growth means you end up with a pop culture. Your, your community effectively, your, your community culture gets destroyed because you're overrun with too many, pe with too many people who are coming in who don't actually care. Or all they want is they, they, they want to be with the shiny, they want to be fashionable. Um, you know, go, go, go buy some hipster jeans and use something else, really. I mean, because, uh, and the other thing is, it, lead, it leads to awful code and not that much sustained contribution because these people might produce a huge amount of stuff for two years, but then they're off to the next popular thing. And what they've left behind is a giant steaming pile of, of well, use your imagination, right? Yeah, a giant steaming pile of Unicode, that'll do. Uh, <laughs> seriously, though, I mean, you know, we were the big platform. Then PHP deployed under Mudge, PHP was a big platform. Then Ruby and Rails was the popular platform. The same sort, developers with the same sort of attitude flocked to those platforms one after another. And what did they get out of it? They got a legacy of years of reputation for absolutely awful code because these people made a massive mess that barely worked, moved on and left somebody else to maintain it. You know, there's, there's a lot of things that are ugly about Perl. There are a lot of things that are ugly about PHP. There are plenty of things that are ugly about Ruby and Rails, but all three of us, the, 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 the common factor has been we have ended up with a reputation that was far worse than we actually deserved because of the mess that the pop culture chasers left when they moved on. And let somebody else be the next victim. I think, I th yeah, I think no, no JS pretty much already is well on the way. And in, in, th in three years, we're going, to hear pe we're, go we're going to hear lots of people going, oh yeah, no JS, you can't write maintainable code with that. And, uh, just, 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 no thank you. <laughs> Goatsy by default. Seriously, I'm, 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 I'm so tired of NoSQL databases that install world writable and then bind to every network interface. I do not want to trust my production data to something who's all, whose idea of a sensible authentication configuration is wider open than Goatsy. <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> so, to the, come, come, come back to this thing. We're, 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 we're gradually growing in ways that are good. We're improving stuff. We're finding ways to modernize ideas we already have. We're writing stuff that's, that's not, this is the new shiny, it's, well, we've looked at this thing that we've had in production for five years, and we've looked at all of the choices we made five years ago that turned out in hindsight to be really stupid ideas. Um, anybody using DBIX class will be able to see a large collection of my really stupid mistakes. Uh, but it, it goes, and then we go, all right, so what do we do for a new generation of this that's going to be incrementally better, fixes most of those problems, but still makes it easy for people to move forwards? Um, and we're basically playing leapfrog on different sides. So, you know, you had, you, you, you had pe people going, ah, yes, the, f the first thing to learn would be Catalyst and DBIX class. Then you had Catalyst, Moose and DBIX class. Now you've got people doing Dance and Moose and DBIX class, and there's still plenty of people doing Catalyst. It, it's not a question of trying to steal from each other. It's a question steal users from each other. It's a question of growing the overall base of users growing the overall community, and be, being able to actually have projects that collaborate um, and looking at sharing more and more of the low-level code so we can focus on writing high-level interfaces that appeal to different types of developer or work best for different projects. And that's, that's, that's just going to keep going. There, there, there's no longer a versus mindset between projects. You know, um, you have all of the people working on web frameworks all talk to each other, all try and steal each other's ideas. We're, we're, we're not trying to kill each other. 
Why would we want to try and kill each other? We wouldn't, if they were dead, we wouldn't be able to steal ideas from them next year. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm, what I'm sort of seeing now is, okay, you know, not, not exponential growth, but I've already given my opinion on exponential growth. But a slowly, gradually growing language, um, a, a, set, a, a set of interlocked communities are changing things. I mean, the, the, the Python and Ruby communities have looked at what can we figure out to steal from Plaque and PSGI. Um, I, know of a, I know of at least one person trying to port um, Moose Accessor syntax to Ruby, because, well, the OO is kind of, kind of fairly reasonable over there. Accessor, writing accessors and constructors is just as boring as it used to be in Perl. Um, and th this stuff is great. I'm sure P5MOP, once, once it comes out, is going to be carefully studied by people hacking on a dozen other languages in order to steal ideas from us. And I, th I think that's wonderful. That's, you know, that, that, that's the march of open source in general. It's not like we haven't stolen ideas from every language under the sun over the years. Let, let's let them get their own back for once, you know. And, but really, that, that, that's all I want out of this. Um, I, I, want to, I want to go out there and find the people whose minds fit with ours, fit with our culture, and the people whose minds fit with Pearl. Um, and I want them to come and have as much fun with it as we're having. And I, I think that that's a much more interesting um, goal than being the next victim of the thundering hordes. And honestly, I think we're doing okay at this. I get people coming into, we get people coming into free node hash Perl, um, talking about, you know, uh, do, do I want to learn Perl or Python? And they go, you know, I'm asking the Perl channel, I'm asking the Python channel. And the, the Python channel go, oh, Perl, Perl, oh, that's evil, no, Just keep away from it, keep away from it, don't touch it, it will infect you. And, and then we go, yeah, yeah, but Python's a pretty cool language as well, but th they're very different, so one or the other is probably going to fit your brain better. So learn both. And if, if after learning both, Perl is the language that makes you happiest, come, come be a Perl developer. If after learning both, Python is the language that makes you happiest, go be a Python developer. We'd rather you were happy writing Python than unhappy writing Perl. And, I, and the, the funny thing is, there have been a number of people who've picked, who've picked Perl outright, not on the basis of which language fit their brain better, but on the fact that they'd rather be a part of a community with our attitude than a community with theirs. And that, that I think, that, that is why, why, why I love being here. It's that sort of way of looking at things. Because that's the right answer. I'd, I'd rather get 10 new users who are new users of Perl because they've fallen in love with Perl as much as we have than 1,000 new users who've turned up because it was supposed to be popular and will leave again in two years and leave as a pile of Unicode. Uh, <laughs> so, a brief interlude. Germany. Germany and German technology. <laughs> Germany provides me with all of my users of DBI its class that are still uploading CGI scripts over FTP. Your ticket machine on the subway rebooted <laughs> immediately after I put the money in. <laughs> and then showed me a Windows 3.1 screen while it came back up. <laughs> the cash machine last night <laughs> was so stiff in terms of the way it grabbed the card that because this place is unholy hot, I couldn't actually grip the card hard enough to pull it out again, and the machine ate my card for my own protection while I was stood in front of it, desperately trying to dry my hand enough to grab the thing. But I, I think I've worked it out, because I get on great with a, lo with a load of German pearl hackers, so clearly it's not just you. It's just your technology and hates me. <laughs> anyway, back to doing okay. Um, things I wanted to say, different language communities um, optimize for different things. So um, Python optimizes for there being one obvious way to do it. Um, Ruby optimizes for what they consider the most beautiful way to do it. 
PHP optimizes for up and running as quickly as possible. Um, these are all valid ideas. I, I would argue that what Perl optimizes for is useful. Um, and before I talk about that properly, I want to digress very briefly. Um, drinking with a few of the Rikudo developers, I finally came up with a way to express why we actually work, work, can come up with collaboration ideas fine, in spite of me being not a detractor of what they're working on, but a skeptic of it, and in spite of them being far more interested in what they're working on than what I am. The answer is, um, the, the Perl 5 and CPAN community is saying, what incremental improvement could we make in our world today? And we're optimizing for that. And the Rikudo community are optimizing for getting the maximum best possible value of all possible tomorrows. <laughs> That's fine. These are both worthy goals. The real, the real problem for them is, all possible tomorrows is a way, way bigger search space. And no matter how optimized your sort algorithm is, that's going to take time. <laughs> really? <laughs> but, I mean, but I mean, really, that's okay. There's still lots of room to share ideas. We've done quite well on stealing ideas from each other in, in both directions. Um, and I think that there's also potentially a lot of room to share API design. Oh, wow, I can't spell. Excellent. Anyway, um, apparently there's lots of room to share proofreading as well. Uh, <laughs> um, and share architectural concepts, because they're at a point now where they're looking at doing a bunch of library build-out. Well, you know, the C-Bank community, we know we've got a lot of experience of building out libraries. So may maybe we can share a bunch of ideas and thoughts there and come up with API designs that end up kind of similar on both platforms and thereby get even more smart minds working on the API designs and thereby better stuff in both languages. Um, and the, the point of this is it's the potential for collaboration out of self-interest. Uh, because collaboration, because, you, because you're excited about what the other guy's working on, is all very well, but self-interest is reliable motivation and self-interest is lasting motivation. If we're always all getting something out of the way we're collaborating together, we're going to keep collaborating for years and years, even if it turns out that, that, that once again their search space is even bigger than they were hoping. And that's cool. We're still going to be making cool stuff as we go along. Um, so the, the, the idea of mine is so useful. Um, I kind of want to say this is why we suck at marketing, but we're kind of not sucking nearly as much. Though there's still a long way to go, but we're getting way better. So I think what I want to say is this is why we think we suck at marketing. Because uh, the, the big thing is um, five minute wow moments are the way to get, you know, the, the original Rails screencast is a great example for that. And they're, they're great first experiences, but they're not really optimizing for useful. Um, useful is a library that you can trust, a library that you can, you can actually upgrade and your code still works. I hear the Rails guys have, have, have finally made a start on that idea, but you know, it, it, it's, not, it's not been their focus as much. Useful is, is code you can maintain and keep maintaining, which is, why I, which is again another reason why I don't want the horde of pop culture people coming in, because they don't write that stuff. Um, useful is it works, it's in production, it's solid. Let's go have a beer. That's, that's what it's about. So I, I think may, maybe let's worry less. Um, five minute wow moments are great, but let's try and generate five minute wow moments on our terms, rather than chasing after doing it on their terms. App Ack. Ack is a great five minute wow moment for Perl as a tool. People download a single file and they've got a better programmer's grab. Bang demonstrable, useful thing. Um, the Mojo casts have been doing a lot of good in terms of getting people excited, but, the way mo but still having Mojolicious core as being something that you can actually scale out with and build up a relatively large application without painting yourself into a corner too often. Um, so I'd, I'd say, if, if, you'd, if you're thinking about this, try and think about how to get a wow out of minus O useful. Um, I mean, th there are other ways of doing that. Pick a library that you love. Write a script that does something useful with it. And then, and this is the bit that's a little bit boring, but it's well worth doing. Either fat pack it, 
power it, build it using static pearl. I, I don't care how you do it, I really don't. But make it easy for people to play with it. Because that way they can see how minor so useful do, fits with being able to play with something now. And once they start playing with it, they're going to have played with it for two weeks and go, hang on, I've been playing with this for two weeks and I've still not broken anything. And that's when they get the understanding of optimizing for useful and why this is awesome. I mean, fu fundamentally, Pearl is already addictive. What, what, what we need to try and do is be better at giving away that first hit. <laughs> but it's, it's got to be a first hit of real Pearl community, of, of our culture. Let, let, stop, stop chasing trying to make things that are as easy to get started with as Rails, because if we optimise for that easy to get started with, we'll optimise against all the things that make long-term maintenance of Perl applications so, so much more pleasant. Um, but one last point, though. Um, one of the things I overheard was uh, Soria asking P. Micho, what should I work on? And Patrick gave a very good response which is just whatever's the most fun for you. Because the thing is, trying to work on something because you think it will better the glory of Pearl, okay, that's kind of cool, but if it's not fun for you to work on, you're not going to want to maintain it. So th th there's, there's often no point. So start off with the minus O fun principle. Audrey started it with pugs. Um, we've cared about it in various CPAM projects. Keep going that way. Because, again, minus O fun is reliable motivation. And minus O fun is lasting motivation. So don't, don't worry too much about chasing what other communities believe is the best way of moving forwards. If you're having fun, people are going to see that Pearl is fun and they're going to see it on our terms. And we're going to attract the people who are actually going to love Pearl. And those are the people we need to reach. So this is also good. So, summary. Pearl is awesome. We're awesome. Keep filing off sharp edges. Keep making it easier for people to get to the useful, to get to the fun. But mostly, keep having fun yourself and keep on being done and down the pub with a beer in front of you. You know, don't forget to have fun doing it because that's what brings us back year after year after year. It's the fact that we're all having fun. And outreach is about showing other people that they'll have more fun in the same way if they join in. Welcome to the future of Pearl. And welcome to the future of Pearl community. Scarily enough, it's us. Thank you very much. <laughs>